We're looking ahead here to week number seven. The Bears go back on the road down to Wapolo, a place that uh, just a few weeks ago we drove right through town. So I think we know how to get there, Jason. We've been there. And, and you drive right through town. We were on our way to what, West Burlington? Oh, there's a football field. We had another 40 miles to go <laughs> for that game. So, Well, hopefully uh, we can see uh, some of the same things that we saw at least in the second half of that West Burlington game as we're taking on this Wapolo squad. Comes in at 2-4, and four, very balanced offensively. I think about 160 yards through the air, almost 170 yards on the ground. So they're a team that really likes to spread it around, do a lot of different things, keep defenses off balance. They do, and... One thing, if you look back through the years with Wapolo over the last eight to ten years since Coach Todd Parsons, really good guy, nice guy, good football coach, PE teacher down there has taken over. They try to balance it out. I mean, you go by plays, amount of pass, passes attempted, and about a rushes attempted, it's like 58 to 42 rushing to passing. They've always thrown it all, try to throw it all over the yard. Uh, this year is no different. Logan Belzer has thrown the ball 140 times, completed 71 of the four, 140 for just shy of a thousand yards, his leading receiver is Rogan Forts, who's also the second leading rusher. Uh, Adrian Lands is their leading ru rusher, 99 carries, and it was 570 yards. And Terry Green also carries the ball. One thing about Lands, though, Stephen, is hopefully the kid gets healthy because he did not play in their game last week against Al Burnett, and he is one of their big weapons, and they're going to need him going forward if they want to try to have a chance at a winning games and b contending for that fourth playoff spot in this district. Well, and looking at, you mentioned Rogan Forts, and he's a guy that just watching a little bit on film, I mean, he's out there. He's not afraid to stick his nose in on things. He's real thick, real solid, plays fullback. He's going to put some pads to you. He's going to hit you. But he's also doing a lot of, you know, leaking out of the backfield, that little, you know, fullback into the flat route, and that's where he's the leading receiver. And, I mean, he's a guy that really you're going to have to keep an eye on both offensively and defensively because he'll play both tackle and back at the linebacker spot. And, again, he's not afraid to bring the lumber. So 26 is one that you're really going to have to keep an eye on. Well, they played six games. If you add his pass, his receptions, and his carries – He's averaging about 16 touches a game. So you're right. They're really going to try to get him involved. I mean, he's got 290 yards receiving. He's got 243 or 45 yards rushing. And he's got a little over 90 touches in six weeks. So they're going to try to get him the ball as much as Lance. Not just, Lance just doesn't do it on offense. He's also the leading tackler on that team by far. And they missed him last week. And still, with Al Burnett, who's the seventh-ranked team in the state and one of the better teams in this district right now, 42-18 to 18 was the final. So they were still right in neck and neck for a while in that game. So there's no way that this team can, that West Branch can overlook Wapolo specifically at home. And we've been there every other year now for, what, 8, 10 years and have had some success. But a couple years ago, they came out, and it was 7 to nothing basically at the end of the first quarter before the Bears finally started to get things going. Well, and that's one thing that I think this team has started to do a better job for the Bears is, you know, they're starting to – focus, be ready to go from that opening whistle. I think we saw a couple times early that maybe a little flat and uh, they weren't necessarily fully into the game until halfway through that first quarter. I think, I mean, I was evidenced by the Friday night where you get the fumble on the opening kickoff that, you know, they're starting to be ready. They're starting to pay attention. They're starting to know that it's a 48-minute football game. You can't take those first five or six minutes off. I kind of I mentioned, I don't know if we said it last week or not, but I know when Matt and I did our podcast after the Bellevue game before last week's game against Durant, I said, you know, in the pre, in, in the pregame warm-up and everything before the Bellevue game, I said, Matt, word verbatim, I said, we just, it just seems flat. Not just us, but just everything's flat. And then, you know, first play of the game, Lenox takes it to the house. There goes the flat. Everything, you're not flat anymore. Then in the last game, you, you heard it. From you're going to hear some things from Coach Peterson and uh, Coach Bailey and Ryan Grovener talking about how this team, right off the bat, first play of the game, a freshman goes down on a kickoff, makes a hit, fumble, Bears recover on 23 plays later, 7 to 0 in 28 seconds. There, you're not going to be flat after that anymore. Yeah. And I think that's the thing, too, is, you know, doing a lot to really try to establish things early on, get those leads built up, you know, trying to get that football drive down, you know, just the Kirk Ferentz model of get the other team feeling like they have to play catch up rather than, okay, well, we gave them a quick score, but we're confident in our offense. But, you know, being able to trust both sides of the football. That, too. And I think another key is this schedule right now, if you look at the schedule coming up, 
week eight and nine, the two teams the Bears are going to play are undefeated right now in this district. They play uh, this week. So we're going to see that shake things up a little bit. Hopefully the Bears aren't looking too much forward because, as you mentioned, they need to have that focus on – the special teams have been outstanding. We don't mention that enough, how wonderful the special teams have been recently With when you're getting two returns for touchdowns in back-to-back -to -back games. Last week, Barnsley about turned one out on, a, on the first punt, and then we had a fumble off the first play of the game and set the whole tone for the game up to score 55 points. That set it all. But the defense needs to get to continue to get that hard-hitting identity back, Stephen. And I think, again, with the hard practices these teams have been having the last three, four weeks, they're going to stay with that plan because it's been really, really pushing this team to that next level they need to get to. Well, everybody's circling that date, week nine, taking on Albernet up in Albernet. Don't uh, us, we'll know. But that's exactly <laughs> what I was saying is <laughs> back it up, week eight. A little bit harder with Wilton. Week seven here tonight. You know, this week you're taking on WAP. I mean, yeah. the schedule is set up where basically through the district, everybody is each week it's getting incrementally harder. And so, you know, this WAPLO team is going to be ready. You know you can't overlook them. Mm -hmm. You can't overlook Wilton next week trying to look ahead to that potential district title showdown. you got to take care of business starting with WAPLO this week. Well, maybe for good luck I'm going to say this again because, it again, it rings true with WAPLO. They are that fighter going into the 12th round that – is way down on the scorecard that the only way they can win is get that knockout. So they're going to knock, try to come with the Bears with every punch, every trick they have, not literally punching, but they're going to come at them with every trick they have because if they don't win this game, their season ends in two weeks, period. No matter whether they win the last two games or not, they are done unless they win out in the district play. So, and, I mean, it's a home game for them. Their crowd can be that extra man, just kind of like the Seattle Seahawks, the 12s in Wampolo can be the guy that pushes them over the limit. The Bears come out and they come focused. I think this is the game where Coach Ty Lee feels comfortable with what they're going to do, and I think Coach Peterson feels comfortable with what they can do from a defense perspective. But they better be ready with no mistakes. It's going to be an exciting one, and we will have all of the action with the Bearcast starting with the pregame at 6.30. Kickoff will be 7 o'clock down at Wapolo, and uh, we look forward to another big week here for Bears football.